Hi, welcome to this blog post presentation by Shiftwork Solutions. Please make sure that your sound system is turned on as I will be narrating this presentation. This presentation is entitled Introduction to Shiftwork. Let's start with a definition of shiftwork. It's an employment practice designed to make use of or provide services across all 24 hours of the clock each day of the week. We usually abbreviate this as 24-7. The practice typically sees the day divided into shifts, or set periods of time during which different groups of workers take up their posts. The term shift work includes both long-term fixed day, afternoon, and night shifts, as well as work schedules in which employees change or rotate shifts. Now, up here where I said it's 24-7, that's not always the case with shift work. Sometimes you're covering 13 hours a day, 6 days a week. 22 hours a day, 7 days a week, 18 hours a day, 5 days a week. Shift work in our mind is just any type of schedule that requires coverage outside of the normal Monday through Friday day shift operation. In the United States there are more than 15 million full-time shift workers and there's going to be more of them tomorrow. There's more shift workers today than there were yesterday and there's going to be more shift workers tomorrow than there are today. Who are all of these shift workers? Well, they're people from everyday walks of life, people that you, if you give it a thought, you know that they are shift workers. Policemen, firemen, miners, food manufacturers, doctors and nurses, refinery and power plant workers. workers. There are several different types of industries that never shut down. Some never shut down because they want to maximize the utilization of their equipment. Other places like this nuclear power plant doesn't want to shut down because it's just too expensive to restart it up again. Hospitals, refineries, they never shut down. Uh, smelters for uh, steel and copper, they never shut down. Uh, things like an offshore oil rig, they put people out there and they just run those things around the clock. So there are shift workers and shift work operations in all walks of life. The chances are if you just take a look around at whatever room or place you're sitting, you're going to see things that were put together, manufactured by shift workers. I'd like to start talking about some of the things that we think about when we think about designing shift work schedules or shift work structures for an operation. One of the things is we know that we're going to have shifts and we know that there are different shift lengths out there, so what's the difference between them? Well, the only thing you really have to know is the longer the shift is, the more days you're going to get off. A typical 24-7 schedule will divide up the 168 hours that are in a week by uh, four. That's because they use four crews. And when they divide this 168 hours up into four crews, it averages 42 hours per crew. Now, if you're on one of these crews and you work 42 hours a week for a year, which is for 52 weeks, you're going to work a total of 2,184 hours in a year. So, how many days are you going to have to work? This is where shift length plays a role. If you want to work just six hour shifts, you need to work 364 six hour shifts to get your 2,184 hours. It takes 273 eight hour shifts to give you the 2,184 hours. It only takes 182 12 hour shifts to give you 2,184 hours. As you can see, all of these shifts give you the same number of hours but the shorter the shift, the less time you have to be at work, that's the good news. However, the shorter the shift, the more days you have to come to work. And on the other side of the scale, the longer the shift, the less time you have to do other things that day. However, the longer the shift, the more days you have off. Typically, we won't see six-hour shifts, but when you look at, just compare a 24-7, eight-hour schedule to a 24-7, 12-hour schedule, they both have the same number of hours and yet the 12-hour schedule has 91 more days off per year. After we've talked about shift length, another consideration needs to be the rotation. What are our options when it comes to rotating shifts? One option is just purely rotating shifts. Crews can spend days on one shift and then they rotate to another shift and then later they'll rotate to another shift. They might do this every week every month or every couple of months. This practice is associated with health and alertness issues and is strongly disliked by most shift workers. In the United States, the, ten the tendency is to get away from rotating shifts and go into fixed shifts. Fixed shifts is where a crew spends all of their time on the same shift. So you might always be a day shift or always be an afternoon shift or always be a night shift. 
This promotes alertness and, as you might expect, adaptation to different shift schedules. So if you are a night shift person and you know you're going to be there forever, you structure your lifestyle so that you can be alert during your night shift. And this increases your adaptation and your overall alertness on nights. Issues with this type of shift arrangement can come up with regards to how are you going to get people to go on to different shifts. Overall, about 75% of all shift workers want day shift. That means there's about 25% that want to either work afternoon shift or night shift. Now, if you're going to have a balanced shift operation, that means 33% on days, 33% on afternoons, and 33% of your people on nights. Some people are going to have to work a shift that they don't want to work. And you're going to have to come up with a way to make that happen. You can be draconian and say, take it or leave it. Or you can have a shift differential. Or you can use other things such as uh, that are widely recognized as being fair, such as seniority. But this will be an issue when you go with fixed shifts. An interesting note, about 80% of all shift workers will still pick a fixed shift operation over a rotating operation, even if they know for a fact that they will not get their first choice of shift assignment. This last option is a really interesting option. It's called, we call it oscillating shift. Some crews rotate while others remain fixed, or alternatively, crews can spend unequal time on different shifts, or they may only rotate through two of, of three possible shifts. For example, you may have a day shift, an afternoon, and a night shift operation, and the day shift and afternoon shift rotate back and forth, but the night shift is always on nights. This is actually a pretty good schedule because day shift and afternoon shift have similar sleep cycles where the night shift has a completely different sleep cycle. Um, you can also, by unequal time on different shifts, you may have a day shift that spends 75% of their time on days and 25% of their time on nights, and a night shift that does just the opposite, 25% of their time on days and 75% of their time on nights. This may be a way to recognize seniority, to give the senior people mostly day shifts, and yet have the night shift people spend some of the time on days when you need to have them exposed to day shift activities. Now when I talk about designing a shift work structure, I have a lot of things going through my head. I think about shift length, shift pattern, the day on day off pattern, long breaks, short breaks, staffing, how much overtime are we going to have, is there variability in the workload, what is our skill levels, how many supervisors do we need, what are the pain work policies, how, what do we do for shift premium, shift swap, overtime distribution, how, what type of management support do we need. We also look at things like external to the production, which is a normal driver for a change. What about maintenance or sanitation? What are your long-range pla long plans? And what about the health and safety of your workforce? These are the types of things that I think about when I look at schedules. What the average person first thinks about when they think about shift schedules is what does the pattern look like? So I want to take a little time just looking at shift, shift patterns. This first one is a seven-day, eight-hour balanced rotating. What I'm saying here is this covers seven days a week. It uses eight-hour shifts. It has the same number of crews showing up every day, and it rotates. So if we, mar if we take a look at this, we have four crews, a crew in each week. And for example, on Wednesday, I've got a day shift, an evening shift, which is, say, the 3 to 11 shift. I have a night shift, and one crew is off. Let's go over here to Saturday. I've got a the week one is off, and then I've got an evening shift, a night shift, and a day shift. So if I was to look down each day of the week here, I would see they have a crew showing up every day, uh, one, one crew on each of the different shifts every single day. And if we look at this as a cycle, what we would do, let's start in week two, we would take Monday and Tuesday off, and then we'd work evening shift Wednesday through Sunday, rota rotate down to week three and work Monday and Tuesday evening shift, so that's seven in a row. We'd take Wednesday off of week three, come to work on nights, now we rotate it up to a different shift, so we're going to work nights. Thursday through Sunday, rotate down to week four and work Monday through Wednesday. Then we're going to take Thursday and Friday off. Then we come to day shift on Saturday of week four. We work uh, Saturday, Sunday, rotate up to week one and work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then we're off Saturday, Sunday, rotate down to week two, Monday and Tuesday. So we have a Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday week off once every four weeks. This is 20 years ago, this is what everybody was doing. Nowadays, we don't see a lot of these. We, uh, we don't see the eight-hour shifts, and we don't see the rotating shifts. But this is a typical type of shift that you'd want to consider. One thing that's interesting about shift workers, if you don't show them everything that's available, or at least a representative sample of what's available, 
there's going to be a tendency to think that you're kind of funneling in them into a predetermined decision. And so I found it best to show them all types of schedules, even the ones that you think that they won't like, just so that they know what's out there. This next one is covers seven days. It uses a combination of eight and 12 hour shift. It's balanced and it's also rotating. Now I don't want to go through all the detail of all these schedules, but if you just look at the top schedule and the schedule right below it, you'll notice there's 12 hour shifts on Saturday and Sunday. The reason we have 12 hour shifts on Saturday and Sunday is let's just look at Saturday. On top, one crew out of four is off on Saturday. On the bottom, two crews out of four are off on Saturday. And the reason is, is that since the crews that do come in work longer shifts, they don't need as many crews to come in. So it only takes three crews working eight hours to cover 24 hours on a Saturday. It only takes two crews working 12 hours to cover 24 hours on a Saturday. Then we go to the far extreme, which is all 12 hours. This is a seven day schedule. It's 12 hours, it's balanced, and it's rotating. So I've got a day and a night crew showing up every day. And believe it or not, there's the exact same number of hours in all three of these shifts. All of these shifts average 42 hours of work a week. All three of these shifts have 2,184 hours a year. All three of these shifts use four crews. So the number of hours you see is the same, even though the very top schedule looks very busy and the very bottom schedule looks unbusy. This bottom schedule, let's just go through it quickly, is often referred to as a DuPont schedule. So if we were on this schedule, we would start in week one and we work Monday through Thursday. Then we get off Friday, Saturday, Sunday, rotate down, and we're off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, come back to work Friday night. So you can see we work the first half of week one, and we work the second half of week two, and this gives us a nice seven-day break in between. That's the key feature of this particular pattern is once a month you have a seven-day break without having to take vacation. Let's move on and take a look at a couple of other schedules. Let's suppose you need to run get 80 hours of production a week and nobody wants to go to second shift and you don't want to have to pay a heavy shift differential to get people to go to second shift. One thing you could do is make second shift look more attractive. For example, you might have a crew that works Monday through Friday. They get their 40 hours and by working Monday through Friday, eight hour shifts. But the evening shift gets every only has to work four days. They're going to work 10 hour shifts. So they're going to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then they're going to have off every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And that's the carrot. So if you want people to go to evening shift and you don't want to pay extra money, you try and make their schedule a little bit more attractive. So I can say, well, I can be on day shift and I get every weekend off, or I can be on evening shift, which is the 3 to 11 shift, 3 p.m. to 11 p.m., and I get a three-day week off, e three-day weekend every single weekend. So this is an, another type of schedule. Clearly, this doesn't cover seven days a week. It doesn't cover 24 hours a day. And there's a lot of things that situations where schedule like this wouldn't work, but this is, I'm trying to give you a flavor for how you can make a schedule do neat things for you depending on what you want to happen. Here's another schedule. Let's suppose we need to run 20 hours a, uh, six, 20 hours a day and we need to do it for six days. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to use three crews. This is a six day, 10 hour balanced fixed shifts. And so what it is is I have a fixed crew that works every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday day shift. I've got another fixed crew that works every uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evening shift. And then I have a crew, it's, this actually has a little bit of rotation into it. The crew in week three works Monday and Tuesday on evening shift. They're off Wednesday, Thursday, they work Friday and Saturday on day shift, and they're off on Sunday. Everybody's off on Sunday. So if we look down the schedule, on Monday, I've got a day shift and an evening shift. Tuesday, I've got a day and an evening. Wednesday, day, evening. Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Every day, I've got 20 hours of coverage because one day crew shows up and one evening crew shows up. This is a good schedule, for example, at a place that is a very high maintenance schedule. For, you might say, take a lumber mill, for example. They have to change out their saw blades every day, and they need at least one day of maintenance out of every seven. And so this gives them four hours of downtime every day to change out their saw blades, and then they have every Sunday down to do the other major maintenance that needs to be done. And here's a uh, seven-day schedule that uses eight and 12-hour schedules. It's unbalanced, or shifts. It's unbalanced, and it's oscillating. So what we have here is if you look at the day cycle, it's got a four-week cycle, and they get, they're all eight-hour shifts Monday through Friday. And then on Saturday and Sunday, we have the, those are being covered with 12-hour shifts. And then their four-week cycle on days, they get half their weekends off. The other crew rotates between evening shift and night shift. They also have eight-hour shifts Monday through Friday, and they use 12-hour shifts on the weekend. Now, you can look at the schedule and say, wow, you know, that day shift is a way better pattern than evening and nights. It's fixed days, which people like. It has two weekends off out of four instead of one weekend off out of three. 
which people like. So they want the weekends off. This is probably something that you would put in, in a place where maybe the bulk of your workforce, maybe 80% of your workforce needs to be on day shift. And you just need kind of a skeleton crew outside of day shift, maybe the guards or sanitation or cleanup or something like that. And so they're a different set of people. They have a different set of skills. And maybe they actually like night shift. So you can find a situation where something like this would actually work quite well. And then we can get really creative. And this is a seven-day, 12, and eight-hour schedule. It's unbalanced and it's semi-fixed. What we, When I put the schedule in a few years ago the for the first time, this is what I did. I took the day shift and, and took all of the extra people off days. And I said, we're just going to have two day crews. This is a schedule that starts on Sunday. And it goes Sunday through Saturday. And it's frequently called the 2-3-2 pattern or the every other weekend off, where you work Monday, Tuesday, then you're off Wednesday, Thursday. You work Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you're off Monday, Tuesday. You work Wednesday, Thursday, then you're off Friday, Saturday, go back up and you work, you're off on Monday or Sunday again. So every other weekend is a three-day weekend. You'll notice that if I take Monday and Tuesday off of week number one or Wednesday and Thursday off of week number two, I can use 24 hours and get seven days of vacation. So those are going to be high vacation days. Just keep that in mind. Then I go to the night shift pattern. On the night shift pattern, this is a five-week cycle. And these are not five crews. These are four half crews. So I've got it structured so that on Monday, I have a night shift showing up uh, on week one and a night shift showing up on week four. These are half crews. So I have a full crew showing up. And I have this day shift person showing up also. I'm going to need extra people on day shift because that's my heavy vacation period for my day crews. Remember up on top, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday are heavy vacation days. So if we look at week two, I've got a day crew coming in on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I actually have extra people here uh, to help cover that vacation load. If somebody isn't on vacation, then this is a place where the night shift, every five weeks, they rotate into days and they actually work with the day shift for four days a week. So some night shift people can uh, get exposure to days. Or if I'm on a night crew and I want a good vacation break, I can take week two off. That's 32 hours. And let's see what happens. Remember, I'm going to take week two off. So I'm in week one, and I work four night shifts. And I get off Thursday night. Now I'm going to be off Friday, Saturday, Sunday of week one. And then I took vacation, so I'm off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday of week two. Go down to week three, and I'm off Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I come back to work Friday night. So I got a two-week break. And I only got 14, I only used 32 hours of vacation time. Also, you'll see on the top, the day shift people have every other weekend off. That means every other weekend uh, is, is they don't have to come to work. It gives them one weekend off out of two or 50% of their weekends. On the night shifts, I'm off for the weekend of week one, week two, and week five. I get 60% of my weekends off if I'm on night shifts. So on nights, I get some exposure to days. I get more weekends off, and I get a better, better vacation break. So we've created another way where we can attract people to nights. We can get night people to actually rotate into days without disrupting the day shift schedule for people that are already on days. I think that's probably quite a bit to cover in just one little discussion about shift schedules. So let's, let's uh, wrap that up here, and I'm going to talk a little bit about overtime and policy development, and we'll call that a day. I'm often asked about overtime. What is the right amount of overtime? And mo for most companies, the answer is simply between 5 and 15%. If it's lower than that, you're probably overstaffed. If, you're, if it's higher than 15%, you're probably understaffed. As far as the cost of overtime, it's probably fairly competitive with straight time. Whatever your cost you to pay for an hour of straight time, it's probably the same as it costs you for an hour of overtime, give or take about 5 percentage points. So let's take a look at what you think the employees think about overtime. Well, if we take a look at how much overtime do you want every week, go over here where it says none. About 13% of all shift workers want zero overtime, and about 4% want less than two hours. But if you go over here that between 8 and 12 hours, you can see about 23% want between 8 and 12 hours of overtime, and some, a um, little over 15%, will say, I will take all that I can get. The average shift worker wants about 7.2 hours of overtime a week. This is good news. You want shift workers to want overtime. It allows you to flex your workforce up without penalizing your people. And you don't have to give overtime to everybody, but if you can get the overtime to the people that wants it, it gives them a chance to augment their income, and it gives you a chance to cost-effectively meet a flexible workload. 
So don't be afraid of overtime. It's one of the common things we see is companies are gun shy when it comes to overtime. And actually they should look at it as one of their greatest assets. Policy development is one of the things that companies frequently overlook. They think that they can use their five day uh, employee handbook and make it work for seven days. And that's just simply not the case. And and this is a costly mistake to make because often if you don't take a close look at your policies and you try to use the five day policies for seven day schedules, you'll find that those policies, the cost of those policies skyrocketed. And then you're going to say, oh, later on you'll recognize you made a mistake and you'll want to take those policies back. And it's not going to be easy to do. Once you've given it away, it's hard to take it back. But there's things. Let's just take a look at a couple of these. Vacation, they need to convert hour. Vacation, should it be converted to hours or days? Should you build it into the schedule? Should you have incentives so that they take a vacation at certain times? Should employees be allowed to carry over or sell back vacation? Holiday and pay and holiday premiums, this is a very complicated subject. You pay double time, triple time. What's the difference between holiday pay and holiday premium? Uh, should you have a keep a bucket of a fixed amount that you distribute or should it be based on where the holidays fall? What day are you going to recognize the holidays? Overtime distribution, this is really, really important. Are you going to force it? Is it voluntary? How do you track it? Can people work doubles, split shifts, call-ins, standbys? Wonder if one line is on a seven-day schedule and another line is on a five-day schedule and they all have the same skills. How are you going to manage overtime distribution between those? Shift assignment, this is a real tricky one as well. Skill set, supervision, diversity, growth, these are all important when talking about who's going to go on what shift. When it comes to policy development, there's just a couple of things that you really need to look at. First of all, you need to look at all of your policies and you need to make them work. But in the end, it should be cost neutral. When you change schedules, a policy should cost you the same. Another point is that they should be seen as fair and equitable. The workforce needs to understand why you made the decision to change the policies the way it did. Keep your ears open for things like that is unfair or that's a takeaway because that shouldn't be the case. All right, so policy development is, needs to be done. It needs to be done before you change schedules because once you change schedules, if the employees find that they got a policy that they like and you want to take it away because you did it wrong, you're going to have a problem.